Oh, give me a minute so I can uh, answer this uh, Facebook post right quick. Um, hey, if you like me and you consider gifts a form of communication, you need to give a round of applause to Lisa Jalopter. She's a computer scientist, a black computer scientist who developed the animation used to create gifts, as well as other pioneering video technology like Shockwave, Bright Cove, Juice, and even Hulu. She was a Brown University graduate, and she served as a Chief Digital Service Officer for the U.S. Department of Education during the presidency of Barack Obama. So yeah, we owe her a lot. Love using my gifts. So you mean to tell me that a black woman made my two favorite thing, gifts and Hulu? Yeah, I know. Who knew? See? Black girl magic. I know. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Time Hop. If you're new here, please give me a like and a subscribe, and I hope you enjoy the content. Today I have Zelly Zadok with me, um, so make sure you give her a follow. And today we will be talking about black women inventors. Take it away, Zelly. Well, it shouldn't be news anymore that women have invented everything from beer and coffee to Wi-Fi and disposable diapers. But what's more important is that black women specifically have offered their ingenuity, innovation, and creativity to the world in ways you wouldn't even believe. Black women's incredible contributions have been largely overlooked in modern society, even though they were able to make even though they were able to make them against all odds. After the Civil War, it was nearly impossible for African-American women to be accepted to universities, take jobs, or even be granted patents for their creations. Intersectional dis discrimination kept many women from being taken seriously as inventors and entrepreneurs. Despite those hurdles, black women were able to fight for patents and in many cases, sell their inventions to the masses. Now, in the, even in the early history, a lot of people don't like talking about menstruation. Uh, it was taboo. But you wouldn't believe how hush-hush women had to be about it back in the 1950s. And while the earliest version of a disposable pad were on the market, they were expensive and cumbersome to wear, often slipping back and forth. Plus, the majority of women who generally were generally too embarrassed to even ask for them directly at a store. So they were still using less sanitary methods like cloth pads and rags during their period. Tampons was around, but because of the various warnings, like for instance, religious leaders used to say they were evil and would make young girls prone to erotic feelings. They, they were not widely used at the time. But Ensign Mary Patrice Davidson Kenner. Who knew there had to be a better way? In 1954, she filed the patent for her invention, which was an adjustable belt for sanitary napkins with a moisture-proof pocket to keep the pad in place, made to be worn under women's garments. It was a brilliant idea that garnered attention from major companies, but Keener's invention didn't come without its fair share of racism. One day, she said she, contacted, she was contacted by a company that expressed an interest in marketing her idea, and she was so happy. But sorry to say that when they found out she was black, their interest dropped. The representative went back to New York and informed her that the company was no longer interested. Now, three years later, in May 1957, Keener was finally granted a patent for her sanitary belt, which was widely used until we finally decided to add the adhesive strip to the bottom of the menstrual pads to secure them to our underwear. This obviously became the new method of choice and the sanitary belt went out of favor during the early 80s. In addition to changing the game with her sanitary belt, Kendra also went on to invent a bathroom tissue holder, a mounted shower back washer, and a carrier attachment for walkers. Of her historic creations, Kendra said her adventures was never about money. She just wanted to help make life easier for people. How often do you hear that anymore? Never. And it's the little things. 
It's just the little things that make our life more convenient that are probably the most important. Exactly. I agree. Now we've all we've had some in, some black women inventors who've gone on to invent really complicated treatments and and items that we that we still use today like cataract treatment in 1986 Harlem born up up the ophthalmologist Dr. Patricia Bath she invented a solution for harmful cataracts that that could lead to bl uh, blindness and with the laser phaco probe a surgical tool that uses a laser and a one millimeter insertion to dissolve the blemish so the patient's eye lens could be replaced. She conceived of the idea in the early 1980s after working at the Harlem Hospital and discovering that African Americans suffer from blindness at nearly double the rate of white people and are eight times more likely to develop glaucoma. She attributed this to the lack of accessible ophthalmic services for black people and began a community ophthalmology system that provided care to those who were normally unable to afford it. She also co-founded the American Institute for the Prevention of Blindness, which declares that eyesight is a basic human right. So not only did Dr. Bath make history with her invention, she became the first African-American woman doctor to receive a patent for a medical purpose, but she also holds four patents related to the laser FACO and continues to make improvements to it to this day. I know a lot of people are ingratiated to her for that. I wonder if um, if the rates of blindness and cataracts are still as high as they once were, and I wonder if it's still kind of the same rates. That would definitely be interesting to learn. I know, and it is. It, I mean, it's a lot of things because these are a lot of things you're talking about. That who knew? Who knew that a black woman was the creator of of all of these wonderful inventions? No, as a nurse, we work with feeding tubes all day, every day sometimes. Uh, Bessie Blount Griffin, she was a Virginia-born physical therapist who spent time caring for World War II veterans, helping them use their teeth and feet in place of the hands that they had lost in combat. So Blount invented a device that would help amputees feed themselves and, gave, and give them an increased sense of self-confidence. Her invention consisted of an electronic tube that delivered small bites of food to a patient at their own pace. It allowed the patient to bite down on the tube for another serving, which would be delivered via a mouthpiece attached to a machine. Now, if you could believe it, the American Veterans Administration declined her invention despite the fact that it would, you know, make it easier for people to eat. So instead, she donated the rights to the French government. Blount took pride in the fact that her feeding machine proved that a black woman can invent something for the benefit of humankind. Wow, it's amazing what you would deny just because of somebody's skin color. Um, feeding tubes are definitely something that's commonly used. They use them for babies. They use them, honestly, for every age, for various things so it's just baffling how you have to as a black woman and as a black person give just give things away or give them away very cheap just to just for them to exist because I can only imagine if these people were selfish and they were like well it's my idea how hard our lives could be right now exactly and it's amazing that uh, we as a people have invented almost everything, like it, everything that's of, of convenience and also that uh, is in use in the medical field as well. We are the backbone of this country for real. I know. Now the last thing I want to talk about is, hmm, let's see. 
beds. You know those cabinet beds with all the drawers and everything on the side of it. Remember those? And whether you live in a small space or just love dual purpose furniture, you want to know this, that the precursor to what we now know as the Murphy bed was actually invented by an entrepreneur named Sarah Good. In July 1885, Good became the first African-American woman to receive a U.S. patent for her ingenuous bed cabinet bed which was adapted to be folded together when not in use so as to occupy less space and made generally to resemble some article of furniture which was when so it was folded and when the bed was folded it could be used as a desk amazing right her design paved the way not just for murphy's bed but also sofa beds and other convertible furniture and all that started with a little old African-American woman in 1885. That's amazing. Yes, and definitely like tiny houses are a trend. I know I was obsessed with watching those shows. And honestly, who doesn't love a dual purpose? They're great in hotel rooms. They're great in your guest space. It's just amazing. The only people who don't like them are the Sims. And if you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was just a little taste of, of items that black women over the years have invented. I'm sure that there's, there's quite, a, quite a few more that black male have um, invented as well that maybe we could get to it at another, at another time. 